Yeah, man. I'll be right over. Cool. I'll see you in a bit. That was my buddy Jason. He's over at Texas Aircraft Propellers and Accessories. We're going to go check out his shop. It's a great place. So today's video is gonna be a little bit different. We're not gonna jump in an airplane and go flying. I know, it's what we all love to do, and I'm looking forward to the next time too. Trust me, it's been a little longer than I'd like it to be. Uh, but today we're gonna go check out something that's interesting, uh, and it's, I think it's gonna be valuable to you because if you own an aircraft, then you know you have to have a full overhaul done of the engine, the prop, and all those major components. Well, my buddy Jason owns a prop overhaul facility here in Houston. He's invited us over to go check out his facility just to give you some insight on what goes on with a prop overhaul. So the process is way more in depth than you probably think it is. There's a lot more that goes on and you're gonna see that there's a really good reason why we have to go to all the expense and difficulty of completely tearing down a perfectly good prop just to look and see how it looks on the inside. So let's go over there and check it out and we'll walk through the process. All right, so today we're out here at Texas Aircraft Propellers and Accessories. It's super bright, as you can tell, and I don't have my sunglasses on. But I got my man Jason over here, and he's gonna take us on a little tour of his absolutely world-class facility that he's got over here. It's beautiful, you know it the instant you step foot in it, and you know they do absolutely top-notch work. Jason, how you doing today? Pretty good, how are you, sir? Great, thanks. Yeah, I'm Jason. Uh, welcome, guys, I appreciate you coming today. Um, yes, we are Texas Aircraft Propeller and Accessories. We're located on Pearland Regionals Airport. Uh, we've been here for a few years now, and uh, happy to have you guys in our facility um, but before I take you in I want you to know we are a Hartzell recommended service facility or a Macaulay authorized service center uh, MT certified repair station and a Sensenic uh, metal repair station so yeah guys uh, glad to have you here and uh, just welcome come on in not too many shops have those kind of qualifications let's go take a look he doesn't like us so the way this propeller works is you've got a pitch change rod, right? That th okay, so this bolts onto the flange of the engine. Uh, there's a pitch change rod in the center of that hole. Uh, the governor will push oil through that pitch change rod. The oil comes out through the top of this, pushes the piston down, okay? So that's what happens when you pull that blue lever out in your airplane. Um, oil pressure is going to come out of this and push this down. There's a cylinder. Um, there's a cylinder that sits on the top, so obviously this piston rides inside that. When you push that blue lever back in, that oil will leave and that spring right in there will push the piston back up, which will make the blades go back into a flatter or a takeoff pitch. make sure um, that this blade has enough meat on it to go through overhaul. Obviously it's aluminum, every time you overhaul a blade it gets somewhat smaller uh, because you have to work out corrosion, you have to clean up the edges. So before we put a whole lot of work into this propeller we have to ensure that it has enough thickness, enough width, and enough uh, you know the proper edge alignment, face alignment, and angles. What this machine is is called an AeroScan. Um, it uses laser technology and it will actually measure this blade for us completely. Basically what he's saying is it's got freaking lasers, man. So boom, it just took his first reading. Now it's measuring the angle, the face alignment as well. But you'll see the results show up on the computer here. It's giving you a width, it's giving you a thickness, it's giving you an angle. So this machine essentially will measure this entire blade after pushing one button, it'll do it in about five minutes. Uh, the alternative 
is to use um, this table over here. You just put the blade on the arbor here, uh, something like this. It's got a different fixture. You guys can imagine that blade sitting here. Then you'd have to use things like this thickness tester here. You have a dial caliper here. You use these height gauges here to check face alignment and edge alignment. And that could take you up to uh, 45 minutes to measure this blade by hand. After the blades have been taken out of the hub and we've inspected them to make sure that they have uh, enough size on them to go through the overall process, the first thing we do is strip the paint. Uh, so we put them in this, uh, uh, this blast cabinet here that utilizes plastic media. Looks like that. The reason we use plastic is because it's, it's not a very invasive blast. It won't uh, affect the aluminum substrate, but it will remove the paint. Okay, so this is our uh, chemical room. Um, so this is a, a strip and etch line. Uh, and so this is what we use to take uh, uh, any corrosion uh, protection off of the aluminum blades. So aluminum blades either have an allodyne coating on them or they have an anodized coating. Uh, and to get proper non-destructive testing, that has to be stripped. Uh, so we use an eight tank, eight tank system here. Uh, the first tank is a soap tank. Uh, this is uh, just an alkaline cleaner that will remove any uh, soot or dirt off of it in our initial process. There's a rinse tank after it. After that it goes into the strip bath which is uh, phosphoric acid and chromic acid mixed with the eye water. Uh, it has to be heated to 180 degrees which is why you see it fuming that way and um, our exhaust tank right here so we don't smell any of that. What this does is it actually softens up the layer, uh, the anodized or the allodyne. Uh, then it goes into a rinse tank from here uh, and then into the caustic, uh, which is sodium hydroxide. That actually will eat off uh, that outer layer uh, into a rinse tank from here uh, and then into the nitric acid. The nitric acid neutralizes what the caustic did uh, because the caustic will actually, as you guys will see in a little bit, will turn the blades completely black. Uh, and then the nitric will turn it back to the silver, goes into a final rinse, and then uh, into the wash down tank here, which we just use a, a hose here. And the way I can prove that these tanks are the proper mixture is through a titration lab here. Uh, so now you'll look at, here's what it looks like after it's been in for about 10 minutes. Uh, the edge has been pretty active. And uh, so now we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna go into the rinse tank. But you'll notice when the blades come out of here, they're gonna be jet black. Uh, that's what sodium hydroxide does to aluminum. Uh, so check it out. blades are now completely black. Now we put them in the nitric acid and it's going to turn them back silver. It's going to neutralize what the caustic did. complete bare aluminum. There's no conversion coating on them anymore at all. So now they'll go into a heater and they'll be dried at 150 degrees for about 60 minutes. Um, and then once we ensure that they're completely dry, then they'll go into the non-destructive testing, which these are aluminum blades, so they'll go through a dive penetrant line. You saw the blades come out of the edge tank, um, so now they're at their bare aluminum state. The next thing we have to do is ensure that there's no cracks. Everything in aviation is about uh, ensuring that there's no corrosion and no cracks. So you have to do non-destructive testing to prove that out. Um, this is the heater that we put those blades in. They'll sit in here for about an hour, and that gets all any of the water out. And then from there, uh, they go through a penetrant line and the blades will be completely immersed in that dive penetrant. We have a 30 minute dwell time, then it's washed off. 
Uh, the emulsifier goes on it, and then obviously there's no windows in this room, uh, so we'll turn all the lights off and we'll look at it under a black light. Uh, if we see any cracks, obviously that's not an airworthy situation. Uh, if the blade's completely clean, then it'll go through the process. Here you can clearly see a crack in the threads of a steel rod that we've put inside of the mag particle inspection booth. Okay, so after you've done your non-destructive testing, the next thing you need to do is actually begin the grinding work of the blade. Uh, so that's what he's uh, doing in here. This blade is in process, um, but to actually zero time something, you have to uh, remove 100% of the corrosion and the edges have to be profiled uh, per the manual requirements. Uh, so he uses a series of these uh, grinding pads here and he'll just you know, run it manually just like this in front of the dust collector and then um, uh, as it's finished then we'll use this final buffering wheel here and uh, this is a super critical uh, phase of the overhaul process because you only want to take the minimum amount of material off you have to remove all the imperfections, all the corrosion, all the damage but uh, he doesn't want to make it go below minimums so it's critical that he makes sure he saves this blade. Okay, after the blade's been ground, it goes into the Aladine tank. Uh, so what we do is we have a little agitation in there and then the blade is set in this tank uh, for about three to five minutes. And then uh, once it's pulled out of there, it will have a nice gold sheen to it. And uh, that's the corrosion protection that goes on aluminum blades. After the blade is uh, alodyne, then it comes into our paint booth. Uh, when we paint, we roll this door down. We turn our exhaust system on and we have uh, filters here, so we have a very, very nice and clean uh, environment to paint in. You don't want any trash in your paint at all, so it's imperative that you have uh, just enough flow uh, to where the, the exhaust doesn't sit on the blade, but it, it, it tends to exhaust out into it. Uh, we have all LED lighting in here, so the painter can see it really, really well. Uh, but this is what a prop would look like um, after the painting process is complete. So it's got a tip scheme, it's got a base paint on the back, it'll be black uh, so there's no glare. Uh, after the blade's been painted, some blades have de-ice boots on them. Uh, this particular blade does. Uh, so the de-ice boot will be glued on. This is a different boot than what may, some of you may be uh, used to. Uh, most boots are electric, meaning there's elements in here and they're hooked up to a slip ring which gets power from the aircraft and the elements will actually heat up and uh, de-ice, right? So melt the ice that's uh, affixed to the propeller. Uh, this is more of an anti-ice system where uh, when this propeller is installed, it's got an alcohol feeder and it drips alcohol into these channels and through centrifugal force, obviously, it, it slings the ice over the blade and that keeps the ice from actually forming onto the blade. It doesn't actually de-ice anything, it's more of an anti-ice. Alright guys, so as you can see, this is a pretty in-depth operation. And so we don't bore you guys to death, we're going to break this up into two parts so you can stay as interested in the second half as you are in the first half because it's just as interesting. Dang, it got kind of dark and chilly out here since we started. Stay tuned next week when we bring you part two, when we reassemble the props and we set blade angles, we put them to the protractors, we do a static balance, we do a dynamic balance, the whole works. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time around. And no, I'm not doing the hand over the lens thing. I'm just not doing it. I told you, I told you that.